Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, it's an interesting one, I've got to say. For years now, I have, um, I'm a big fan of cell phones. And I actually started years ago to, I was going to do a channel based on reviewing phones. But I found that... For one, there wasn't too much variety. For two, it would have been quite expensive to buy a lot of phones, you know, to start building up an audience before companies would sell me phones. And for the most part, there was really only two phones that I personally found that I liked. And I actually always have one or the other on me. It's either a Pixel or the Galaxy X S series. Um, now, for this one, I actually got this case as a as part of a deal that I got for the phone. I, I I know good ways of getting really good deals on phones. I hardly ever pay more than like two, sometimes $250 for a brand new phone. But it's something that if I were to let out, everyone would do it. And then it just wouldn't work for the handful of us that know how to do this. Um, it's a trick that I learned because prior to me creating the channel or Prior to me thinking about creating a channel about reviewing phones, I was reviewing phones for corporate corporations. Um, they would basically send me a list of devices um, and send me the devices and, you know, ask which one will run this software, that software will be more secure, um, profiles for work and home, all of that. And basically to give them ratings to see if it would work for, and this was usually corporations dealing of, you know, 2,500 employees or more so but i got to find that for the most part yes i mean there were some all right decent you know budget phones but their software would not update after you got it um and you know it would be literally running a three-year-old android version when you bought it brand new so it's like are those really savings when you're losing out on all those security updates and there's really no updates after that it may be a $200 phone, but it's 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 outdated when you already bought it. So, you know, you have to go back and forth. Anyway, the point is that for all these years that I've had, I, like I said, I usually have, and these, these are only two of the four cell phones I currently have that have SIMs, and then I cycle through. Yes, I know. And one of them is a Pixel 4 XL which is now, what, four years old, almost five. And I still love that phone. I actually, about three months ago, I one morning I woke up to go use my phone. Nothing. It was completely dead. I'm like, oh, okay, it needs a new battery. It's fairly old, long in the tooth. I had not had a battery replacement. I took it to you, break, I fix. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll replace the battery for you. I think it was six seventy nine dollars and I had a coupon. But they called me a few days later. They're like, we got the battery, but the phone's completely dead. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, even with a new battery, it won't turn on. It won't do anything. So I, I was like, well, let me try. Because I had read up on how some of the Pixel 4 had been given extra warrant, even though that period was even expired. But long story short, I contacted Google Support. Um, they took me to a higher tier. The higher tier sent me an RMA. I boxed it up, sent it to them. Less than two weeks later, about 10 days, I received, it was still my phone, or at least, <laughs> at least the back and the front of it, but the internals were completely different. I knew IMEI, knew everything, and it was a, basically a brand new phone, and they didn't charge me anything. Now, I've also had good, similar stories, not quite as good as that one, with Samsung. Samsung is also pretty good about honoring warranties and or going outside of their boundaries in order to make sure that, you know, even if it's like, oh, you're only two months out of a warranty. Well, yeah, it shouldn't die or this shouldn't be happening. Let's see what we can do for you. And there's been several times that I've gotten a free replacement of a phone out of warranty. I'm not saying that's always going to be the case. But again, I've dealt with these companies for many years. And I there's certain things that you can say, certain keywords that'll get you to the right people that'll get things done. Anyway, one of the primary brands that I've used and sub-brands because SpyGen owns several, including CaseLogic. SpyGen and CaseLogic have been 
pretty much the only cases that I use on my devices because they protect them. That's, I mean, simple as that. They're good, they're well-priced, and they protect my phones. I mean, I, I can be rough on my phones. They drop out of my pocket, drop them on concrete floors, and I have not, actually, I have not busted a glass either front or back since 2012. And that was my fault because I put a phone in my back pocket, completely forgot about it, and sat on it. And this was an S7, I want to say. And I just bent it or curved it. Um, big guys like me should not be sitting on skinny little glass phones. Anyway, um, so when <clears throat> a few weeks back, when Spygen reached out to me, um, because I was not even aware that they are... Um, they have grown. They've bought some other brands of uh, cell phone accessory companies. They really seem to be upping their game. I know they've added a lot of lines of products um, in as far as the mobile space goes, but I was just not aware that they had gotten into the mechanical keyboard space. Anyway, uh, I was, you know, I was honestly at first surprised to see an email from Spy Giant. I'm like, what are they going to, you know, say, hey, I'm one of your longest running customers pick anything you want. For I just didn't know what it was about. But they said they had seen my videos and they were wondering if I'd be willing to take a look at their keyboard. You know, no, no, um, no restrictions. Just, you know, do what you do with all the other keyboards. We'd love to hear your opinion. We've watched your channel. We enjoy the fact that you're so thorough and you put a lot of information into your videos and that's I, I get this feedback a lot i know some people are like man your videos are so long well then don't watch them but i'm not a commercial i'm not when i do a video i mean if i really like a keyboard you're gonna see that through my excitement if i don't like a keyboard you're also going to see that as well but i'm gonna be honest whether I paid for the keyboard, whether I received it for free, I never get paid. I mean, there has been there have been companies that have approached me, and I won't say their names, but have said, hey, we want you to review this product. We will pay you X amount of dollars, and these are things we want you to say, and th these are things we do not want you to say. I won't do that. Why? Because that's a commercial. There's plenty of commercials out there. There's plenty of creators that all they do are commercials, and I'm not going to be one of those. I don't believe in in selling myself to sell a product i mean i just don't think that for me that's just not my bag um call it my my punk rock upbringing but that's a sellout i mean yes receiving a product for free i understand i even had that that kind of uh feeling in the beginning like how can people be honest when they're receiving the product for free but as I have been known, and I mean, you guys, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I will receive products from certain companies and I'll be honest about them. You know, if there's, I don't like this about that, or I don't like that about that. Um, there's several companies like KP Republic, um, like What Geek, like that, that will send me products knowing that there may be things I will say negative about it, but I will do my best to be honest. And um, there's only been two companies that they were like, well, we're never sending you anything again. Why did you say X, Y, Z about our product? I'm like, because it was true. Well, you didn't have to say it. You could have just told us and left that out. Like, then that wouldn't be me being honest. I'd be refraining from being truthful. And I'm not, I'm doing you a service and I'm doing a disservice to my viewers. And my loyalty lies with the consumer. I'm a consumer. I'm not a corporation and you guys are consumers. I mean, obviously some of you guys out there watching work for companies, but I will say what I don't like and what I think, you know, could have been done differently. So I, I don't like hate on things. I do my best to provide feedback and how I would have done things and why I don't think this is good or why I think it's too expensive or done wrong or whatever the case may be. So I have companies that stand by me, a Red Dragon, Royal Clutch. They appreciate that I give them feedback. I have had several companies now, a handful of companies, probably half a dozen, maybe more, that have told me that they share my reviews with their internal engineering team, their product developers and designers. Why? Because they're like, listen to what he's saying. He's saying, he's speaking up for a good group you know, a good portion of customers that 
have you know aren't saying anything that are just living with it or returning it and just never saying anything and he is speaking those things follow along i've seen red dragon i've seen several companies actually take feedback that i've given them and incorporate it into new products and that to me that to me is a win because um, i'm not i'm not doing this you know to become <laughs> Even if I had, you know, 10 times the number of followers I have on here, it's not like YouTube's going to pay my bills. And I'm not looking at that. I enjoy doing this because it's something that brings me some peace and calm, especially with my conditions. It, it helps with my stress and my anxiety because it's just me and a keyboard. I mean, I'm here with you guys, but it's, you know, it's more of a, I did a small stint as a professor. So it's more like I'm doing a online tutorial course, but like I said, most important thing is informing and being as honest and as forthcoming as I can be. So <clears throat> that said, I <laughs> did not mean to go into a long intro or rant. Uh, so to complete the story, they said they asked me if I'd be interested in taking a look at it. Obviously, like I said, they're not sponsoring. They just sent me the keyboard uh, for free. Um, I had this scheduled for a... <laughs> For, for a date that has already passed, this winter has just been a little bit crazier than usual. And as far as the weather goes, um, we went uh, two different times without power, one of them for more than a week. Um, there have been some setbacks and my schedule has been delayed. So to SpyGen and to everybody that I let know that I was going to be reviewing this keyboard, I do apologize for the delay, but here we are. So let's go ahead and get into it. So today we are taking a look at the SpyGen. PJ2100 US. That's just the model number. It's an arc play mechanical gaming keyboard. It has 8,000 polling and scan rate. So this is truly meant for and directed at gamers. If you want it fast, I mean, everybody's asking for 1,000 hertz polling rate. This is 8,000. So <laughs> eight times quicker. 8K, baby. So as far as... As gaming goes, this looks like it's going to be a real competitor of existing gaming boards and HE boards, because how would this compare to an HE board? And the HE, I mean the magnetic or the Hall Effect keyboard. So this one is loaded with cherry browns. Very nice. They look like the cherry milky browns, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they have 8K dynamic pipeline technology. I'm not sure what that is. Let's take a look at the back. <clears throat> Now, they do have something that I appreciate, which is a wheel, and it looks like a really big dial. Um, and it says that it has multifunctionality, so it looks like you control media, playback, volume, uh, monitor brightness, LED brightness, scrolling, zooming. So it looks like it's pretty programmable. Um, it looks like you have per key RGB, the PB key of this. The keycaps, the shine through keycaps, are PBT, double shot. Usually they're ABS. PBT should last a little bit longer before they shine. Um, and there should be no wear since they're double shot. And dynamic pipeline technology. It's an optimization technology exclusive for SpyGen ArcPlay that helps achieve the best performance by processing at a high speed in each situation. All right. So, um, all right. It says that it is uh, well. Um, dampened they have premium pu foam pu i'm not sure what polyurethane foam um no that would be pe uh, i don't you know urethane pu i don't know what pu is but maybe we'll find out so let's go ahead and open it up get in here and see what we've got all right first thing i will say is my first impression it looks like everything is well packaged i do believe that packaging says a lot about what's in the product um yes i've seen much better than this but um these are some pretty thick blocks of foam and i like that they actually well there is no there's no dust cover dust cover is a really good thing to add spyogen and it doesn't add much um it, but it helps keep keyboards clean so i would consider adding that for any future revisions so we have two boxes here let's go ahead and take a look at oh we have some stuff under here as well oh share your experience all right and need help very nice and then a small 
user manual that tells us the built-in functionality that we'll have out of the box of the keyboard. We'll probably take a look at this in a minute. I don't feel anything else down there. So here we have additional keycaps. I like that they actually put it on here. This one doesn't say what it is, but here we have some additional keycaps. They're not loose. They're in a nice little tray. We have some WSD keys, a different colored uh, space bar, uh, some orange shining through arrows, as well as a different escape key, different back, shift, plus, enter, zero, and enter for, oh, black enter. We must have an orange enter on there. I like that they come in trays in a little box that says what they are. Actually, I'm going to keep them in here so I don't lose them. Hey, come on, guys. Uh -uh. This is this is not the switch puller. Gonna need a metal switch puller or keycap puller. All right, we got a brush, we got a keycap puller, and we got a, a pretty decent nylon braided cable. Um, this tells me that we're probably not dealing with a hot swap keyboard, which is a shame because that's just common nowadays. I mean, some people may like the cherries for a minute, may not. They might want to put some Boba U4Ts in there. They might want to put some blacks in there. Who knows? But these, just don't use them on the keycaps. They're, they're more likely to damage your keycaps than to pull them off of the uh, keyboard. Uh, they do include a brush, which is nice. But again, a dust cover would make a bigger difference towards keeping it clean than a brush. And I like the cable, I got to say. I like that it has a SpyGen logo on it. Um... I like the connectors. It does look like it's grooved specifically. I'm not big on having grooves and specific connectors and, you know, being hidden, but, oh, it locks into place. Eh, no, I want it to be available for any of the USB cables I might use because although this is nice, I may be putting into a situation where I already have a USB cable running through. I may have a $40, you know, handmade USB cable that I'm using and it might not work with that particular, you know, grooves or whatever that you have so just something to keep in mind and here we are with the spigen arc play a full-size mechanical 8k dynamic pipeline technology and we have a sticker on the dial just to remind you of that that's pretty well attached speaker it actually leaves some uh junk behind but i'm sure a little bit of iso will work that out now the knob I, for as big as it is, it is extremely wobbly. Um, doesn't feel like it pops up, but it wobbles both on the horizontal and the vertical axis. So it's like, it doesn't feel very well attached. All right. Unfortunately, I hit <laughs> the, the, the space button or something. All right. Just so I can recap real quick, because I don't know where I actually turned off the... Um, the recording now it's working like but it didn't this is weird all right so so far i'm having troubles just getting this thing to work right let me see all right right now it's typing but to do a real quick recap because i don't know what i lost um we are dealing with socketed or soldered um switches so because of that, there's no way for us to remove them and to lube them and to fix the stabilizers as the stabilizers are not stable. They're quite loose. Um, there's probably half a millimeter to three tenths of a millimeter worth of tolerance um, looseness. And then the, the ping on this. Why? Because it's a steel plate. Steel tray mounted plate in 2024. This is outdated. This is highly, highly outdated. And I mean, okay, I got a nice knob. Oh. Oh. What's it? Is it doing something? All right, see, I mess with the knob and all of a sudden it stops working. The whole keyboard stops working.
All right, so there's some key combinations. Function, let me see. Jesus Christ, these are, they're like almost like um, Contra combinations for Nintendo. LED on off, key LED on off, change reaction, change RGB LED color settings. Static LED mode. Let's see, function three. No, it's not doing anything right now. So I have to unplug it and replug it back in because the keyboard just stopped working for whatever reason. All right, now it works. So function. Anytime I type function, the keyboard stops working. Function backspace for reset. Will that work? Let me see something. seems to be sending a whole bunch of odd messages to my kernel. Alright, so as soon as I use the wheel, the entire keyboard stops working. This is, um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm supposed to be able... To... See, it says two different things. It says function plus two, and I can get, um, it says function plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four to activate key mask functions. But then it says function plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four oh, on the on the macro pad. So these are how to set the, the rates. So this would be 1, this would be 2K, this would be 4K, and this would be 8K. But it's not working right now. So, uh, plug it back in. Alright, obviously, you can't have a keyboard that has to be constantly being plugged in. Alright, so let me see what it's saying. Alright, it seems to be trying to report as an MTP device, and that's where... And then it's wanting to rebind a whole bunch of keys as soon as it's connected. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Spygen ArcPlay 8K Gaming Keyboard PJ2100. Alright. Right now it's working. But, touch the wheel. Alright, no, it's working. It's still working. Nope, not anymore. As soon as I do a key and wheel combination, it's done. So... Well, out of curiosity, I'm going to go and uh, plug this into my Windows machine and see if it's doing the same thing. I'll be right back. All right, so I went and plugged it into my other Linux primary desktop. Did the same thing. Worked for a minute. As soon as I touched the wheel, it stopped working. Went and put it on the Windows machine. It worked just fine. Um, this probably has some issues with how it... it, it it sends a whole bunch of error messages um, as far as key remappings that it's doing and they're contradictory to what the system is set up for. So I'm going to guess they did not do any testing on Linux and probably very minimal testing on Macintosh because if it has these kind of issues with Linux, it's going to have Mac issues as well. Um, I did not see a Mac mode on here anywhere. Again, this is a tray mount steel plate, soldered switch, non-lubricated switch, um, a volume knob that, oh, okay, now it's doing volume. So 
I installed the software and I've got to say that SpyGen, you guys aren't doing real good. Windows Defender came up and did not want to install the software for me because it's not Windows certified. It literally takes 15 minutes to go get your software <laughs> certified by Microsoft so that that doesn't come up. But you haven't even bothered to do that. The, the software program only allows binding and only of some keys, very limited. Um, you can select there what you want your volume, what you want the knob to be, and I put it to volume, and now it seems to actually be working instead of locking up. But there does seem to be um, some issue. Well, I guess now it's not. I mean, I don't know what the the wheel was set to, but whenever I touched it, it um it messed up on here. So we have pretty bad stabilizers on here. Um, just a. bad situation all around what do you think this keyboard retails for $99 nope $129 nope $149 nope $179 no but you're getting closer $199 for this all right I was saying at the beginning of the video I don't want to hate on keyboards um but i could never recommend this to anyone even if you have all the money in the world why would you waste your money on this there are plenty of full-size keyboards with a knob that have a lot more features that are half this price <laughs> fully loaded hot swappable different plates this is insanity now i understand other companies wanting to jump in and you know get a grab onto the, you know, get a little slice of that mechanical keyboard market. But why the spy gen feel that this keyboard is worth $200? I mean, it doesn't even have the functionality of a $30 bare bone hot swap. It doesn't even have a decent plate. It has a steel plate, not PC, not palm, not even aluminum. Heck. It doesn't have hot swappable switches and it comes with non-lubricated switches that you cannot remove unless you're going to solder all 104 or 101 how many ever keys this one has it's missing the three keys so 101 keys um what's going on what what am i paying 200 dollars for exactly the software is bad there's, I mean, yes, I have some basic macro functionality. There's some keys I can remap. There is no function layer to speak of. Uh, the color, I mean, yeah, I can do per key RGB, okay. Um, and I can change the, the wheel scroll lock. Other than that, I mean, what exactly am I paying $200 for? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I can take a look at so many keyboards that I just have sitting here that are so much better built i mean this is the uh the zoom 65 uh this was uh, i think 110 dollars. i mean bare bone yes but amazing keyboard is it a gaming keyboard i could use it as one it's got a knob yes it's not a full size okay well how about uh we got a tkl this one's very close yeah i don't have a knob but i have wireless functionality and it's a tkl and this was 129 fully loaded. And this is aluminum, an aluminum keyboard that's hot swappable with a PC plate and options for other plates. They even have the plate files online so I could make my own plate out of whatever material I want to. Would if I wanted to and stick it in my CNC machine. What am I getting for $200 for this? If I were to have purchased this, I honestly would would feel like I got taken. Okay, 8,000 hertz rate. Okay, that's fine. Has anybody ever needed anything more than 1,000 hertz? 1,000 hertz is 1,000 times per second. Is 1,000 times per second too slow for you? Do you need 8,000 times per second? I mean, it takes us like, I mean, at our fastest, like 9 tenths of a second or 900 milliseconds to react to something 
So, I mean, that's once you're lucky, maybe twice a second. So I just don't see, I mean, where I get that they're going 8K and 8K, you know, is also commensurate with 8K video. So I don't know if they're trying to like connect those two and making people's brain go, oh, well, this is better than 4K. It's not the same thing. It's just not. Um, I'm trying to think of something good about this keyboard. I mean, I like how the knob looks. I don't like that I can't press it for mute. That's the whole point that I use the wheel for, is be, being able to control volume and being able to quickly mute my keyboard. The fact that I can't press the knob is silly. Yeah, I can turn it all the way down, but I mean, I gotta give it a few turns. It's like clicking like one, two, three, four, five, six. About six times I gotta turn it to go all the way to mute. I just might as well just use the already mapped keys for so I want some ping. Oh. I'm honestly, I'm disappointed. I was honestly expecting so much more from this. Like I said, I didn't take a look at anything else. Um, not their marketing materials, no other reviews. If there's any out there that exist. Um, I was hoping to, you know, say, hey, this is a pretty good gaming mechanical keyboard. And if you're just, you don't want it for gaming, but you want it because of X, Y, and Z features, it has it. But the knob doesn't even have the basic functionality of being able to press it. Plus, it's on here, like, I mean, it feels like it's going to fall off. It's so loose. So, it's like I've got this cheap plastic case with a very, just a horribly bad diffuser layer in between. The, I mean, I can't even really tell that there's a light on or not. And, I mean, I've got the lights kind of dim. They're on medium settings so that some of the, I mean, the LEDs obviously show up from the keyboard. But can you see any lights from there? Well, I got to kind of put my head up there. There's a little bit. It's, it's very little. So we've got a cheap plastic case. We've got a tray mounted steel plate. Um, we've got soldered on non lubricated switches. Okay, so they're cherry browns. Okay, great. Why didn't you lube them or get them factory lubed or get other switches that are already lubed? tons of switches available out there that are pre-lubed and ready to go and are better for gaming because i mean i like tactiles but for gaming it needs to be a light linear put some silver you know some super silvers in here some speed silvers some aqua cs silvers i mean there's so many better switches to choose from that are either pre-lubricated or don't need any lubrication but they still should still be hot shot because i need to fix the stabilizers i could not use this keyboard this keyboard would drive me insane but even more so if i paid 200 dollars for it because i'd be like well i gotta use it i paid money for it and i'd just be like this keyboard only upsets me and it feels like it's a big company that who i've liked and i have purchased their products religiously for the past decade or more that they would make a plate like this just to take advantage of people because that's all they're doing there's no way the cost of this keyboard even with all of their technology and everything is more than 20 dollars a board i guarantee you that they are paying less than 20 dollars, and that's with the boxing everything for each one of these units they are literally selling them for my estimation an entire factor over their price so 10 times what this keyboard costs roughly i may have maybe 21 dollars maybe 19 dollars but it's roughly in the 20 dollar range what is going on this this is i feel dirty even reviewing this i'm, I'm sorry spider i i'm being honest i you guys asked you wanted your honest opinion i'm giving you my honest opinion this keyboard, if you want to sell something with your name on it, do it right. But doing this, which is a very, very, very poor attempt 
at a full size keyboard, at a keyboard period, at a mechanical keyboard period. Um, it is insulting that you're trying to sell this for $200. And it, it is clear that all you're trying to do is take advantage of people that already have loyalty to your brand. And that honestly makes me not ever, not, it honestly makes me feel like I will never buy a spy gen or spire gen derivative product again, because how much am I getting overpriced? I mean, yeah, I do pay a few more bucks, maybe 10 more bucks per for a case, you know, that's spy gen over a no name, but am I paying too much? That, this makes me question that. This makes me go, oh, you're just trying to jump into a space and just make money from the cheapest of crap and selling it for the most money because it has your name on it. I'm sorry, but your name does not make this keyboard worth 10 times what you paid for it. Just the specs. Today, we are taking a look at the SpyGen ArcPlay PJ2100 US wired full-size keyboard with an op. It is preloaded with non-lubricated Cherry MX Browns, which are soldered onto the PCB. It also includes a tray-mounted steel plate and only one pair of fold-out flapper feet. It does come preloaded with some shine-through PBT OEM profile keycaps, but does exhibit issues with functionality on Linux machines. The Windows software is quite limited in its abilities, has no function layers, and is also not Windows certified, meaning it's going to give a security warning before installing. Windows certificate or security certifications for applications is a very simple process and why it was bypassed is beyond my understanding. This keyboard comes weighing in at 1,205 grams with a chin that sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface and a back that sits at 25.5 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of five degrees. Flipping out the back paddle feet will raise the back up to 36 and a half millimeters, changing the angle of typing to nine degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $199.95. <sighs> All right, I really don't know what else to say about this keyboard. I mean, the plug, I used this plug, which I've been using for a while on my um, video setup, and now it actually has permanent markings on it because of the wedge shape. There is no reason for that wedge shape except to have forced people to only use the cable that comes with it, which is, is not a good look. Um, it's a cheap plastic, I would guess ABS case, steel plate, uh, tray mounted, soldered switches that are unlubed, uh, poor stabilizers that have bad tolerances, uh, software that's not even Windows certified. They couldn't even bother to pay what is it? I think $35 fee to register. And then it's like a, like a small form you have to fill out and you submit your executable. And usually within 10 days or less, you'll get back either, hey, you need to correct this, 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 and this. Or here you go. Here's your certification. Package it up to your install file, uh, install program. And then you're good to go. It does you, you, $200 and I don't even get Windows certification. <laughs> I don't seem to have a Mac mode that I can find. So... I mean, I guess people on Mac and Linux machines don't game. I, I, I don't know what to say, but this took me at the beginning of this video. I was excited about this keyboard. And now I want to ensure that any brand of cell phone cases I buy are not spy gen. A company's product should not make me want to stop buying all of their products. But in this case, it's showing me their true colors. They're going to take a keyboard that cost them $20 or less to buy at wholesale, and they're going to charge $200 for it. And they think that that's fair, a thousand percent profit. I mean, it's not a good keyboard. It's, it's not a good keyboard for two years ago. 
at this price, let alone in 2024. Like, have they even taken a look at the market in the last two or three years? Or are they basing this off of how the market was in 2021? I, I, I don't know. I do not understand. I do not comprehend. And I cannot recommend anyone purchase this keyboard, whether you're a gamer, you're looking to get into mechanical keyboards, you think you can fix it. There, there's, this just not, this is a, this is a bad value. Any way you look at it from any angle, there's nothing worthwhile about this keyboard period at $30. I'd say, Hey, why not? I mean, it's got that 8,000 you know, hurts polling rate, which, you know, honestly, I don't think it's going to make any difference in gaming. I think an HD keyboard is going to do better. I think any keyboard that has a thousand hertz polling rate is good enough for any game. I don't think any human is going to be able to be faster than a thousand times per second. So 8,000 times per second isn't going to improve anything in my opinion. So, um, and I do have some games loaded up, but they're on Linux. So <laughs> to go through the trouble of loading up a game on Windows right now, and I, I'm just, it's not worth it. Plus, I mean, if I'm going to go through that trouble, I'm going to use a keyboard that I'm actually going to enjoy while playing, not one that's going to ping like a church bell when I touch it. I just, I'm, I'm completely and thoroughly disappointed and i just cannot recommend this keyboard so i'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of these uh this full-size wired keyboard from spy gen the arc play um i cannot recommend it I'm, I'm sure the the sound test will only add to what i'm saying that there's just there's nothing worthwhile here uh, it's unfortunate but all i can do is say the truth so again uh, uh there's any question about my ability to remain unbiased, even you know if I might receive the product for free. Well, I, I hope that this helps to show that I am. I will always tell the truth, even if I. I hope that Spygen comes back to me and asks me for some feedback and see what they could do. If they're willing to do that, reach out to me, take some feedback from me, and actually incorporate it into their next keyboard and show that they're actually willing to do right by their consumers, I am more than glad to work with them. I hope they're not going to be like, well, you talked badly about our keyboards. So we're never going to let you review one of our products again, because that only speaks to them, not to me. So until the next transmission, I do hope that this has brought you any clarity about this keyboard you were looking for. Keep calm and keyboard on.